Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John Duyard. Welcome to LifeSpot.com, where we prove the ancient medical wisdom of Ayurveda with modern science. And today, I want to talk about something really important, the 10 most important reasons why our brain and our mood and our nervous system need ashwagandha. Now, there's some amazing science here that I want to share with you, but first I want to talk about our mental health. You know, we all know the pandemic and lockdown, and the recession, political unrest have all caused a significant impact on our mental health. But the science tells us that this problem has been brewing long before the pandemic came. In the year 2007 to 2018, the rate of depression among teenagers increased by 59% according to the Pew Research Center. According to the CDC, to make matters worse, in 2006, among young people between 10 and 24 years old, suicide rates were stable. But from 2007 to 2018, the rates increased by 60%, making suicide the second leading cause of death in America. So this is a really important issue. Yes, the pandemic, yes, we have issues now for sure, but this problem is longstanding. And Ayurveda has a multi-pronged approach to deal with this. And in the article associated with this video on my website at lifespot.com, you can actually download a free ebook that goes into the lifestyle, diet, routine, exercise. It's completely free. It's about 30 pages. And it gives you a quick overview of what Ayurveda is and how important it is uh, from the perspective of you know, living a healthy, happy life um, and so much impact on our mood. Because we all know at the end of the day, right, it's this crazy mind of ours that makes us feel the worst, that impacts our physio physiological health, our digestive health. It all comes from the stress and how we handle that stress. So if you're watching this video on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. If you're watching this on my website at lifespot.com, please take a minute, subscribe to our newsletter, and on your way out, check out our Ayurvedic store. We have all the organic herbs, including ashwagandha, which we're gonna talk about today. Ashwagandha is a really, really important herb. And I wanna start this by saying a little prayer to ashwagandha or in gratitude to ashwagandha. This prayer comes from a grower of ashwagandha in Portland, Oregon, his name is Jeff Johnson. And this prayer came to him as he was growing the ashwagandha. You know, he suggests that the, that the plants actually gave him this prayer. And it's a beautiful prayer that I want to share with you before we start this discussion and go into the 10 scientific reasons why ashwagandha is so important for our mood and our health and our depression and our despair, right? So the prayer goes like this. May the traumas of life turn into a fine dust and blow away in a warm breeze. Something so simple, but yet so profound. And as we're going to see here, as I dive into the research here, that's what ashwagandha is going to do. It actually does help to remove some of the traumas that are deeply seated in our nervous system and affect how we handle the stress in our lives. So ashwagandha, one of the main things that it does is it actually, and the reason why it's so effective for the brain is because it literally crosses the blood-brain barrier. Very few things do cross the blood-brain barrier, but ashwagandha does with its constituents called withanolides, with uh, withanocides, and it was something called withafarin A. Um, so ashwagandha, you know, has many, many constituents. We all know that ashwagandha has been studied again and again and again as an adaptogen, as an adrenal tonic, uh, really great for sleep. The, the botanical name with ania somniferin, uh, uh, somniferin is basically literally named after its ability to put folks to sleep and help support deep sleep. It can give you energy in the morning, go run a marathon, but it can help you go to sleep at night. But those are the things I'm not gonna talk about today. What I'm gonna talk about today is how it affects your mind, how it affects your brain, how it connects your cognitive function. And one of the reasons it does all these things is because it does, in fact, cross the blood-brain barrier. Studies show it increases cognitive function. In one study, a double-blind crossover study where they had 20 people, 10 of them took the ashwagandha, 10 of them got a placebo. Then I had a 14-day washout where they didn't take anything, and they flipped it. The other group took the placebo, and the other group took the ashwagandha. And the study actually found out that, that ashwagandha was, in fact, a very significant booster of cognitive function and psychomotor performance. So it's been proven again and again and again. Uh, ashwagandha, uh, we're going to go through the list. This is the third 
a reason why our brain and mood need ashwagandha. It's called a medi rasayana. Medi means the nervous system. It's one of the seven tissues in the body of in Ayurveda, uh, which controls your nervous system, your brain, your central nervous system. And, and, and as a medi rasayana, Ayurveda says that it will increase memory, cognitive function, information retention, and protect the brain from oxidative damage. Other medi rasayanas, including ashwagandha or brahmi, or brahmi brain at lifespa.com, you can read all about that as well. And like I said, there's an article with all the science and the references there for you to go to uh, at lifespa.com. And uh, so please check that out. And um, when you take these medi rasayanas regularly, the science shows that it will increase immunity, and I've got a whole article on ashwagandha immunity as, a, as, as a, um, uh, an immunomodulator, which makes, keeps your immune system from reacting really, really crazily high or crazily low. Really important to modulate your immune response. Regular using of this can increase, improve overall health, and of course, it's known for uh, as a rasayana, which means longevity agents. So it's really important. You know, back to the mental health issue, it's been shown in studies to support worry, anxiety, despair, depression. The, the constituent that's, you know, that's responsible for that is something called the glycolithanolides, and they have been shown to protect against despair and anxiety when chemicals were used to create despair and anxiety. Ashwagandha protected against that response. It's also been shown in other studies to match the effectiveness of Prozac. You don't think about ashwagandha as something so powerful for mental health, but the science is there for you, partly again because it does cross the blood-brain barrier. It's a little bit of a longer uh, art, uh, video, but it's really important to understand the roots and the depth of, of ashwagandha, what it's really about. GABA, gabaaminobutyric acid, is a neurotransmitter used for anxiety and mood issues. But the problem with many of the, the, the agents, the, the extracts, the high potent chemicals that are used to activate you know, this neurotransmitter, GABA, they have side effects like making you really tired and fatigued and give you brain fog. Well, ashwagandha has been shown to give support higher levels of GABA GABA amino butyric acid, the neurotransmitter for mood and stability and support, without giving you the side effects of brain fog and fatigue. In fact, it's been shown in study, study after study after study, after study to boost energy, mental function, cognitive function, and give you the mental clarity that you're looking for, which is kind of really, really cool. One of the things when you look for a good source of ashwagandha, you want to make sure you know what you're looking for. Um, the leaves and the root are both very beneficial. The roots are generally more potent, so you always want to think about the root and getting that's what we use at lifespa.com. There are many extracts out there on the market that are claimed to be really, really potent, and they are. They're like more like medicines, but, an, an, but at Lifespa, we use the whole herb. We understand that the value between the actual whole herb in its original form and the microbiology that exists naturally with that plant make up the whole plant. Nothing in nature is alive without the microbiome. So when you take a, a plant and you extract it and make it into a sterile herbal extract, you've taken away all the bugs. It's a sterile agent. It doesn't have the natural intelligence that the whole plant was designed to have. Nothing in nature. We're here as human beings because we supported the environment for the bugs to grow. Every plant wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the microbes. So to all of a sudden take the plant, pull it out of the ground, soak it in alcohol and extract it, is only going to make it, is going to create, to strip away all the intelligence, all the microbes, and the beneficial microbes are so critically important, right? I mean, we now know that the lack of microbial diversity is what they're calling an extinction event when they compare modern humans to humans about a thousand years ago in New Mexico and Utah from a museum. They took their poop from this museum and they found that the bugs, they had so many more diverse bugs in their gut than what we have today because it's literally an extinction event. So getting the microbes in the foods we eat, using organic foods, and the herbs we take when I take my organic herbs that we make at lifespot.com that have full spectrum of all the herbs and all the microbes, we test the microbes when we get the herbs, we test them after we make our formulas, so we know exactly how many good herbs or bugs that are in our products. They really become like potentized probiotics because you're getting the intelligence of the plant 
and the synergy of the microbes that are specifically attached to the root of that plant, ashwagandha in this case. Study after study after study is showing that when you use the whole plant with the bugs, they have different properties than when you take an extract, which can be very powerful, don't get me wrong. They're medicines, just like when you watch TV and you watch the drug commercials on TV. Those medicines cure, well, fix things. They have powerful effects, but they always have a consequence. And that consequence is the list of side effects that they say on the TV, right? So that's what you're gonna be getting when you take just the herbal extract. Now, can that be used as a medicine to get on, get better, get off? Absolutely. But if you're gonna use these things as food, as the way I like to use them, to rebuild, rejuvenate, and repair the body, and help get the body to do the job for itself and not create dependencies, then I'm a big believer of using the whole herb. I will use extracts at times for, in short order, but those are not the herbs that I use on a seasonal basis. When our ashwagandha is harvested in the fall and winter, I'm taking ashwagandha. When Brahmi and other media recita for the brain and nervous system is harvested in the summertime, I'm taking Brahmi throughout the entire summer. So, so, so it's really important because you wanna get the right bugs at the right time in the right season because the science shows that our ancestors, our hunter-gatherer ancestors, they all had bugs in their gut that changed from season to season to season to boost immunity in the winter when we needed it the most, and ashwagandha will do that, to you know, decongest you in the spring and help you dissipate heat in the summer. The bugs in the soil change, the plants that are harvested change. We need to align ourselves because that alignment that creates a, a, a reset, a sinking of our biological clocks and our circadian rhythms. This is all Ayurveda 101. It's beautiful and now backed by science. So please, you know, if you want to learn more about Ayurvedic medicine, go to our website, sign up for our newsletter. Um, you know, become, become a member of our family. We put this knowledge out for free. All the knowledge is for free. And of course, we have got our Ayurvedic store. We sell, you know, the whole herb. So that's why I'm a big fan of that. But everybody talks about the extracts and how potent they are. But I got to tell you, uh, they're missing the point of what herbal medicine is really about. It's about the intelligence that includes the plant itself, the host, which we are too, and the microbes. Without them, neither the plant nor us survive. In addition, we found that ashwagandha, in terms of back to our mental health discussion about ashwagandha, the sixth reason why, is that um, ashwagandha has been shown to increase brain cell replication. Now they always told us when you were young that as you get older, you don't make new brain cells, you know, so don't go drink a six pack of beer because you're gonna kill a bunch of brain cells. Well, you shouldn't still go and drink a six pack of beer, but you actually do regrow brain cells. They discovered a protein called the BDNF, the brain-derived neurotropic factor, and they found that um, when, when ashwagandha uh, was taken, it actually protected this BDNF protein from damage when it was exposed to toxicity. Toxicity, particularly in the brain, which is really, really you know, prevalent from air pollution and things like that, uh, it breaks down and destroys the, this protein called BDNF, the brain-derived neuro, neurotropic factor, which builds brain cells, and it actually blocks that from happening, which is really important. Another thing ashwagandha does is it increases cell-to-cell -cell communication. There's another neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which is a, uh, a processing agent. You know your computer, you can get like, you spend more money for a higher and faster processor. Well, our brain is a processor and it can go fast or slow. Well, the reason why it goes fast is because of this neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. And ashwagandha has been shown to inhibit the things that block the production of acetylcholine. So that's why ashwagandha increases your processing speed, right? So you have a quicker, faster, higher potent computer upstairs, which is kind of really important. Another thing that's really interesting about ashwagandha, it protects our cells from toxicity. Um, one of the things that is very toxic we all know about is something called MSG, monosodium glutamate. And the FDA um, says that monosodium glutamate is safe, they're allowed to put it in foods, but they recently made us, made restaurant owners or flavor enhancer producers to put it on the label, the MSG, because years ago it wasn't, didn't have to be labeled. Now it has to be labeled because of all the, the complaints and the symptoms that go along with it, including headaches and flushing and sweating and numbness of your feet, 
heart fluttering, tingling all over your body, nausea, weakness. I mean, the list goes on and on about when people uh, have an MSG reaction. The G part of that, the glutamate, is an excitotoxic agent. In other words, glutamate will overstimulate the nervous system and create the nervous system going kind of in a haywire, overstimulated way, and it causes even to the point of cell death when it gets overstimulated. And ashwagandha, when, it, when, the, when the body was exposed to glutamate at a high level, ashwagandha protected this overstimulation from the glutamate, which is really important because it also protects us from many, many other things as well. So that's another thing that you should know about is because it's really powerful protection. In the, in the fall and the winter when it's harvested, it's just you know what we really should be taking because that's what we need our immune system. And I've written articles about ashwagandha as an as a, as a immunomodulating agent. So please go to lifespot.com, read that article as well. Learn about ashwagandha for your immune system. It's also been shown to boost autophagy, cellular recycling, cellular repair, right? So there's a, there's a uh, constituent called with it, with a ferrin A, which has been shown to protect collagen from being degraded. So collagen damage, which is the collagen for our skin and thin skin and wrinkles and accelerated look of accelerated aging. Well, with a ferrin A has been shown in many, many studies to protect collagen damage. In other words, it actually decreases age-related protein damage to the tune of 40 to 60% in the studies that I cite in the article about this at lifespa.com. Another thing about this is that ashwagandha has been shown to boost longevity and weight loss. Why do they go together? Well, what's interesting is that weight loss and accelerated aging were both caused by, in one study, the increase of age-related protein damage, the damage of our collagen and damage of other proteins, and ashwagandha protects those. In one study, 23% there was a 23% reduction in weight uh, and fat mass in the body. And they and found that the mechanisms of that 23% reduction, reduction in weight was due to one, decreased age-related protein damage, and two, a whopping 16% natural reduction in calorie, in calorie intake because ashwagandha also naturally um, regulates your hunger supports natural satiety. And it sounds like, oh my gosh. And I gotta tell you, the reason why ashwagandha is one of the most studied herbs on the planet is because it is an oh my gosh herb. It's a really one of those herbs. And I'm just talking about ashwagandha from the mental health perspective here today. I've got articles for fitness, I've got articles on immunity, I've got articles on adrenal support, fatigue, endurance, it's amazing when I worked with the New Jersey Nets and I was the director of player development for two years, um, we gave them ashwagandha before and after every game to get them ready and also help them do the repair as well. So and boost immunity during a long season in the winter when they're traveling, uh, it was, it was uh, uh, a quite an amazing feat. We actually went from the, uh, during that period of time, we went from the number three most injured team in the league to the number three least injured team in the league in one season. One of the things we did was we supported them with herbal, uh, organic herbal support. And one of those herbs that I gave them was ashwagandha. So please check out this article associated with this video if you really like it and you're watching on YouTube, give us a like. Uh, definitely sign up and subscribe to our channel. And if you're watching it on our website, uh, please sign up for our newsletter. Check out the free ebook on Ayurveda. If, you want to, if you're just getting started with Ayurveda, go to our store at lifespa.com slash store and read the science about ashwagandha there as well. In the, the store, you can read more about ashwagandha and learn more about it as well. Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. John Duyard. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.